folks welcome to this sabbath eve live stream had a few minutes on performing shuttling duties to do a live stream for anybody out there who wants to ask any questions comments criticisms feel free to step up and ask i'm your host the master of this channel colin jason knife and matthew colin glass and i know i know the screen is black you see i don't know what you look like and if you decide to comment i probably don't even know your correct name so therefore, I'm maintaining rule one, rule equal, where you can hear my voice and I can communicate with you, but you don't really need to see my face. And in contrast, you're able to communicate by typing and I can't see your face. So that's as close to rule one, rule equal as we can get in this scenario. Not that I mind showing my face because my face is all over this YouTube channel. The thing is, is if I turn my camera on, then I'm going to be looking at myself. And uh, <laughs> it's bad enough that you have to do that watching the videos. I certainly don't want to subject myself to that. So how's everybody doing out there? How's everybody coming along with their correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, studies? I know there's been a few people commenting on the channel. Um, if I had to give a little uh, suggestion to those of you contacting me, perhaps wanting my help or wanting to learn the grammar or something, a suggestion would be to try the best you possibly can to be consistent with what you're doing. Because I will get people that are, they appear to be so passionate and in the middle of something, like some people will contact me and they say, oh, you know, they, they just got out of an institution and they're, they're homeless and they need help. And they'll contact me and then I email them back and offer to set up a consultation and then I don't hear back from them. And then all of a sudden they contact me again and they say, I really want to learn and blah, blah, blah. I've had a guy do that to me three or four times, but can never maintain a consistency. So if I had to give a recommendation to someone like that or anyone out there who wants to learn this is be consistent. If you're not, a, if you are not in a stable position to learn this, then it's probably not the best time to learn it. It's probably best to get it, to establish a position or location or domicile where you can learn comfortably and you don't have to worry about chaos and, and crazy stuff happening. Because that's definitely not, as far as I know, conducive to learning this. Anyone who's ever tried to learn it while they were under extreme stress and duress has not been able to do it. It just is not able to do it. Hello there, member AAAA, whomever you are. Welcome. If you have a grammar question or any other type of question, feel free to ask. I appreciate your membership and your support. The system was built on a rotten foundation. And this is just indicative of, of that. It's just going to go and get worse and worse and worse. 
people think, oh, you know, it's the people that are we're electing. It's, it's their fault. They we need to put the right people in there to fix the system. If you got a ship where the wood is rotten, there's not really anything you can do to keep that ship from sinking. Putting new a new crew aboard a rotted, derelict, shitty ship is not going to make that ship go any better or faster or be more reliable. It doesn't matter who you put on it. The ship, the vessel, is complete and utter shit. So, there you go. That's my take on it, folks. I say find another ship. Find another vessel. Create your own biosphere. Create your own vessel. I personally stay away from uh, people that favor an authoritarian construct. That's a red flag for me. I have a question, Jason. Why is it that syntaxing beginning at the end is more easy, you say? Let me say that I do not grasp the syntax mechanics yet. I am struggling a bit there with the syntax. Why is it that syntax beginning at the end is more easy, you say? Well, being that you don't know how to syntax, it's hard. It's going to be hard for you as a student to grasp this in anything other than a theoretical sense. So to just, I guess, paraphrase myself in syntaxing videos, the reason I would convey to you that syntaxing starting at the end of a sentence going backwards is easy, easier and more efficient, is because that's my experience with myself and with teaching hundreds of students. I've tried teaching it going forward, and it always happens that when you go forward and you start banking values, you always come to a point where, oh, there's a mistake somewhere. And then you have to backtrack and redo it and then keep going. If you start at the end and go backwards, it takes that out. If you know what you're doing, there are no mistakes. Because even if you know what you're doing and you syntax forward, you will make a mistake eventually, like five or six words in. You'll think something is, is what it's not because then you get a couple words more and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, that, that changes it. But I guess, you know, the only way to know that is if you learn out of syntax or if you take a class from me. It's very easy. I can show you this. Like normally in the first workshop that I do to provide the basics of correct sentence structure in the first one hour workshop, if you choose to do a workshop with me in a confidential, which you would have to contact me at my email address, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. Only if you're serious, of course. Um, the first workshop that we do, first 60 minute workshop, most of it will be spent on how claims are created, where they come from in a theoretical sense and in a practical sense. And then I will show you how to create a correct sentence structure, go through all those mechanics, and then I will cover par se. And then at the very end, I will give examples of syntax and run you through it. And right away, if you take this course, you will be able to tell and get closure on what it is that I'm saying because you'll see me on screen doing that. And I guess outside of that because you've been around for a while and I don't think you've ever taken a class from me so I don't think maybe you're not with the volition of wanting to take a class with me so the other option that I offer is to study the the videos here on the channel study the syntax playlist and I'm sure I'm 99.9% .9 sure it will become apparent to you why going backwards is more efficient and accurate for a beginner to do or for anyone to do for that matter just got to put the time in i mentioned this to the members which you are a member a a a a so as a member i'm not sure if you're a loyalist contributor or a loyalist but if you're a loyalist contributor member then you will know that i just published a video yesterday or the day before uh, special message to the members that uh, I'm about to introduce an additional mechanic to use while that will make syntaxing easier 
and more accurate and will just build on what I've already put out there. It's a new mechanic having to do with going uh, port side to starboard side, meaning modification, meaning effect, and then going from uh, starboard side to port side, what we will call conditional locational effect. And it, I, the way I, I'm going to explain it, I'm going to try and explain it the simplest way I can, and I think it's going to help a lot of people out. It's going to give them even more knowledge and make it even easier than, than it is to learn syntax already with all the videos I've already shared and things that I've done. You're wrong there. Ha ha. I truly want to take a class, but I want my situation at the moment to become a little more stable. As you said at the beginning of this live stream. Oh, I'm wrong because I don't think you want to take a class. Well, there's a quote that I did. Um, actually, I think it was me that said it. I quoted myself. Isn't that funny? In the community section where I say, if you really truly want to learn this grammar, you will do everything you can to start learning it right now. If you truly, truly want to learn it, nothing will stand in your way. It will be a priority. If there are other priorities that take precedence over the grammar, then you'll do whatever you take to take care of those first, but the grammar will take a back seat and you'll find every excuse not to learn it. I'm not saying that's good or bad because, I mean, if you don't have a place to stay and you don't got food to eat, I mean, why the hell would you be interested in learning correct sentence structure? You would first want to take care of, of your situations, you know, or if you're in other situations in your life, it doesn't matter what it is. If you, if you have a home and you're, you have a job and you're taking care of a family, why would you need to learn correct sentence structure? Point of making is that those that are supposed to learn it will learn it and they will stop at nothing to learn it. I have found this out through teaching in the last six years. It's easy for me to see, <clears throat> to identify, especially if I do the a 10 to 15 minute video consult with you. It's easy for me to, to credential who's serious and who's not. Because usually the ones that aren't serious will talk, the way that they'll talk, they'll talk in a certain way. They'll talk about that they want to help mankind. They want to help bring this to the world. They want to teach it. They don't really, they, they have like a vague, vague reasons as to why they, there are no personal like reasons to learn it. And so they never learn it. The ones that want to learn it have a very specific focus in mind having to do with their own lives, usually. Like when I started learning it, my goals were number one, of course, to learn and get closure on the grammar to be good enough to teach it. Number two, I wanted to write correct sentence structure contract. So those were the two main goals. And the third one was to be able to swim in the sea of fact as well as in the sea of fiction. And I achieved all three of those goals within a year of studying. A year, 365 days. I was fortunately in a position to do that. But I was dead serious about it. I mean, I was like studying this stuff 12 to 15 hours a day, every single day for weeks and months on end. Because I knew that this was something that I could do. And of course I wanted to help other people, but you see, I understand. I understand. I cognize that there is no such thing as you know, changing the world or helping your fellow mankind as in like, but let's put it this way. I knew that the way I would help my fellow mankind was for me to learn this grammar and then put it out there in the public on a YouTube channel, which is exactly what I did. And so now there's close 
There's got to be close to a thousand videos on my channel, free to the public. And that's the gift. And that's the help. And no one can say that people are hiding correct sentence structure knowledge. Because I'm certainly not hiding it. It's out there in the public. It's been out there in the public for six years. Anybody who tells you that someone's, that they, quote unquote, they are trying to hide the grammar. Or that it's classified. They're obviously trying to sell you something. Because then comes the next thing. Well, how do I get a hold of this secret knowledge, this classified knowledge? Well, you got to pay, you got to send in this blah, 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 200 bucks, blah, blah, blah. You got to join up with this particular group. You got to get this particular document to get approved and authorized. And then you'll get the secrets. But no, you won't get all the secrets at once. No, you got to keep sending in your, your fees. And then we'll trickle the information to you. Kind of like someone who's uh, dying of thirst. You can't just give them the whole bottle of water at once. You got to give them little drips. Keep them coming back. Keep them paying that money. Anyways. It's not hidden, folks. It's not hidden. I'm putting a poll up. Appreciate you uh, taking a look at it and voting. Can the word is be an adverb? Yes, no, or it depends. There is only one correct answer. Remember Colin David Eiffelman, Colin Miller telling that story about Bill Clinton? Which, by the way, by the way, keep this in mind, folks. Just putting this out there. David Wynn Miller has been telling that Bill Clinton story for years, right? And who is standing right next to him when he's telling that story about Bill Clinton? Russell J. Gould. If Russell knew that it was wrong or thought that it was wrong or thought something was crooked or rotten in Denmark or whatever. Why didn't he say shit while David was still alive? Why didn't he come into seminar and be like, you know what, David? Clintons are crooked Republicans. Or I'm sorry, they're Democrats. My bad. What's the difference? There is no difference really on paper anyways. They're all two, hand, two, two parts of the same body. It's just a Hegelian dialectic. But why wouldn't you say, you know, why are you dealing with these people, David? You're disqualified. I don't want to work with you anymore because you're, you're making contracts with these crooked-ass politician people. And I thought we were, we were against that. But no, he never said a word. Never made a peep. Not a sound. Not until, for the most part, after David passed away. Then all of a sudden... Now we wanted to come forward and start talking, but not while David was alive. Go ahead and cast your vote. The poll is, can the word is be an adverb? There is only one correct answer. And if you parse the word is and you go to the earliest nativity root meaning of that word, you will have your answer. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. What is, is. Well, in correct sentence structure, is, is the verb. The verb of the thinking. Thinking is movement. And R is the plural of that movement. In correct sentence structure, the verb of the thinking goes after the cause and the concern in the sentence. For the facts of the facts, and then you put your verb in. R. Is 
in the fiction, if you're syntaxing a uh, fiction document, a two-conditioned state, a verb-conditioned state cannot exist without an adverb modifying it. Appreciate those individuals who are voting. We got five votes so far. Does anybody have any questions? Anything they want to talk about? Any topics? I wonder how many people out there have a correct live life claim. I wonder how many people listening right now have a correct fate of volition claim. <clears throat> I wonder how many people out there watching this are actually using this on a day-to-day -day basis. Be curious to know. My guess would be no one. So what's going on in the old... Uh, what we'll call the quantum grammar community. Does anybody know? I haven't even heard much from uh, Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher since he got kicked off of YouTube. Does anybody know what he's up to? I know some people that come to this channel, go to his channel and follow what he does. And, I mean... That doesn't matter to me if you do that or not. And I know people come to this channel that go to Russell J. Gould's channel. Now, I do draw the line with contracting with anyone who is affiliated with Russell J. Gould. If anybody out there is following Russell J. Gould or working with him or his people I will not contract with you because part of my volition is not to contract with people with a warlike volition and you say well hold on a minute Russell doesn't have a warlike volition uh, well yes he does because if you listen to his recent videos in the last few years he talks about that he implemented martial law Martial law is war against the people, folks. Why do you think he has a spear or a spire on top of his flag? So, I won't be contracting with anyone like that. I think Ivan, a living man, I think that could possibly be Ivandian. Is that Ivandian? I don't want to assume, but I feel like you are Ivandian. Especially with the way that you're your wording things <clears throat> you're right jason i'm agree with you about russell now i started my path through russell's contract now i'm trying to do some legal contracts and realize that i'm not on the commercial system well of course you're on whatever system you want to be on we are led through presumption and assumption to think that we are involved with the fiction legal system which I mean I guess if, I'm not sure what you mean by commercial because I I conduct commerce every day but I I'm not like the commercial fiction system everything I do in the fiction is told as a salvage pretty much So what a lot of people don't get. It's not about completely abandoning the system that's already in place. It's about being a steward and a master of your contracts, towing those things as salvaging, still using those systems, but instead of being a victim of the system, being a steward of your own contracts, using the system as a conduit. No, I'm not Ivanian. Okay. Apologies for that then, Ivan. Apologies. The things you were saying reminded me of, of him.
That's why I ask people to share their correct names on here. And I know a lot of people, um, they use terms like living man or man in their names and they only use like a first name. I know that those people get those ideas from common law and things like that. But to me, that makes things more difficult to communicate. That's why I kept my full name, uh, Colin Jason Ivan Matthew Colin Glass. Because now I have more credentialing factors. I don't want to be obscure. I want people to know who I am right off the bat. I don't want people to guess, well, is it this Jason or is it that Jason? Because this guy's name is Man, comma, space, Jason. And this other guy's name is Man, comma, space, Jason. And this guy's name is Jason the Living Man. Which Jason are we talking about here? So I do use that name on my live life claim i know some people have some sort of <clears throat> connection or problem or association with what they call the surname and what may have been known as a slave name but again that's part of the fiction if you want to be beholden to the fiction and assign fiction meanings to what your you choose to be as your name that's up to you you, you can, if you become a live life claimant, you can use any name you want. You don't have to use the name you that's on the birth certificate. Which, by the way, that birth certificate is not yours. But you don't have to use that name. You can make whatever name up you want. But the thing is, is you have to be, you, you have to hold that name and go by that name after you create the claim of the live life. So maybe instead of Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass, I decide that, well, you know, I don't want to be that anymore. I want a different name. So I want my name to be, let's see, I love turtles. Turtles are, are my totem <clears throat> animal. I love beaches. And I love water. So on my live life claim, my name, I'm going to choose my name to be Colon Turtle hyphen beach colon space C S E A period. So that's my punctuated name on my live life claim. Turtle Beach C. And now if you want a contract with me, you better write on your contracts. You better address them to colon turtle hyphen beach colon C. Period. A A A A. Uh what is your time at the moment? My continuum location <clears throat> at this moment is 1926. 1,926 hours. 1,926 hours, however you want to say it. Where are you? I'm right here, bro. Where are you? right here <laughs> oh. let me look at this pole real quick all right I'm going to <clears throat> I'm gonna give you closure on the pole <clears throat> maybe I should Go, I'll go one more minute and then I will give closure on the poll. I have jumped around from different groups over the years, but they all end up the same. Oh, hey, Jerry. <clears throat> well, I don't want to be the type of guy that says, I told you so. But, bro, I told you so. I told you that a few years ago, didn't I? Why I don't affiliate with groups. Because <clears throat> I found out right quick. That when you get involved in a group and if you start learning anything and you start getting closure on things, there are going to be other people in the group that aren't on your level and it's going to become like an ego battle, pretty much. And there's going to be disagreements. And so right away I was like, all right, there's no way 
in hell that I'm going to be a member of anything like that because I see how it ends up. And I'm glad I stuck to that because now, as you may or may not know, Jerry, <clears throat> I have about a dozen students that either have closure on the grammar or are very near closure on the grammar, like 97% there. They know it well enough to use it. And we all approach each other on equal footing. And so we have each other's backs, but we're not like a group where everybody has to agree on what we're doing. No, we all do our own things in our own biospheres. But if someone needs help, of course, someone's gonna step up and help. But the common thread is that we all have closure on the grammar. And so if we're using grammar, then we're all on the same page. If you don't have that, if everyone doesn't have that equality of closure, then the group's going to fall apart. And it's just going to be like jockeying for control. What was the name of the English man who claims to have studied under David Wynn Miller? Hmm. I'll let someone else in the chat answer that. Because that, that's a story that's kind of slippery. And I can tell you that All right. There's a fella named Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher who made some videos with David Wynn Miller in 2018 where he went to David Wynn Miller's house and filmed some videos. They're videos of Mark and David being in the same room and things like that. Now to let you know, I was a part of that. Meaning I was there when those things were happening. Meaning I wasn't physically there in the house. But there were confidential webinars that took place that Mark put on that I was a part of. And also Raven was a part of it as well. My tutor Raven. I was in contact with Mark back then. And so I was aware of everything that was happening. So I was a part of that whole thing that was going on. That whole scene. And I can tell you. That while Mark did get footage of David, it's my position that Mark did not study anything under David Wynn Miller. If he did, he didn't learn anything. Because there is no evidence that Christopher knows how to syntax. There is no evidence that he knows how to create a correct sentence structure. About the only thing he knows how to do is parse. And if you go to his website and if you listen to his videos, he will say the word syntax, but what he's really talking about is parse, which betrays a critical lack of knowledge of grammar. And I know that uh, he got kicked off of YouTube. I don't know why he got kicked off of YouTube, but I can make an educated guess that he was saying all kinds of crazy stuff about human trafficking and child trafficking and blood sacrifices and, and things like that. Just saying crazy stuff that I'm not saying whether things like that go on or they don't go on. That's not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just to go down to the basics. If you make a claim, you better damn well be able to prove it. And you better have proof of it. You can't just go on YouTube and say stuff like that and then mention names. Like name and shame. And then not have the proof of what you're saying. Because if you don't have the proof, if you don't have a contingency, then what are you doing? You're slandering. And so he was kicked off. Again, I'm not saying that stuff doesn't happen. I'm not saying at all. I'm saying if you won't really truly want to bring it to the rest of your fellow mankind, the atrocities and the horrors of things like that, 
that you know is a fact are going on, then you need to show it as a fact. You need to show proof of it. And you have to have a safety net. Because what do you think? If these people... Okay, the theory is the people in positions of power do these things, engage in rituals and all this horrible, horrible stuff going on, right? If you're going to come out against them and start do and start naming and shaming, you better have your ducks in a row. You think they're just going to let you do that? It's common freaking sense. So that tells me one of two things. Either Christopher is enormously stupid or or he's a part of it. And I'm not saying he's a part of those horrible things I mentioned. I mean, he's a part of the fiction system. Like he's part of a distraction. Like there's a distraction for every conspiracy theory. If you, if a certain conspiracy theory agrees with you, then the fiction system will put out a psyop that appeals to you and get you off track. That's why I say if you learn this grammar and you get closure on it, it will make things like this very apparent to you. You will benefit from having closure on this grammar. All right. And Russell J. Gould is part of that same fiction system. There is no evidence that he knows the grammar. So the answer to the question, can is be an adverb? The answer is no. Unequivocally, no. Thank you for joining me, everybody. I appreciate it. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button, and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, You'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you. Thank you.